Okay. Hey everybody, it's Ani. Today I'm going to show you how to do waddle weaving, which is this. Um, waddle, W-A-T-T-L-E. Uh, it's, it's an old technique for building fences and other structures. Uh, generally, um, hazelnut is used traditionally, but we don't have hazelnut growing around here. It grows further north of where we live. And so after some experimentation, we found that we like black walnut best. Now we harvest this from an area that's not protected. And if you're going to harvest wild branches, you need to make sure that it's not a protected area. Um, generally, that would mean wetlands. So don't disturb wetlands at all. Just be careful where you're going. Um, or you can purchase long, uh, what do they call these? Whips. But if you can harvest them yourself, obviously it'll be a lot cheaper. So we found that we like black walnut because the, the whips are nice and long. They're quite strong, but they're still flexible. So they've worked really, really well for us. As you can see, we're building quite a lot of structures here, mostly raised bed and then raised beds and then this fence here. So today I'm gonna to show you how to weave. If you have any small areas like up there, we have some really narrow spaces. Uh, you need at least three because if you just have two, so if you just had two, there's no tension that's holding the rod in place. So you at least have to have three. See if you have three, you have enough tension. You want to place your poles about a foot width apart and by foot, I mean like your foot length. So not quite a foot, probably hmm, eight or nine inches, maybe 10. So I actually just use my foot for the placement of the poles to kind of guide me where I should put them. It's not an exact science, you know, this is relative. Anyway, and then once you get your poles in place and your branches, you start weaving. Now when I start very first, like I am here, these don't have any branches on them. They're a little bit more liable to being shifted by the pressure of the branches. So I will usually pick two that are about the same Oh wow, that's, that was lucky. About the same width and about the same um, length and all that. And then, uh, let, me, let me do it over here so you can see better. And I will put one in. Start at the very corner. <sighs> nice fence pounder. <sighs> Post pounder, I mean. Anyway, so you start at the end. And for some of these, you're gonna have to kind of work them just a little bit so that they don't snap and you if you just pull it it's going to put pressure on one kind of pinpointed area along here but if you kind of work it like this it gives some bend in the whole thing and it it goes in a lot easier so I'm just going to kind of work this here get that in there there we go and of course the end is easier because it's narrower okay so I'll put one in like this tap it down a bit and then I'll put one in before I push this all the way down which is when it really starts to bend the poles one way or the other I'll put a second one in opposite of it see and how it's kind of pushing back on it so I gotta work that just a little bit so I don't want them to snap There we go. And then I'll push them straight down together. Just with your foot. When I was first waddle, doing waddle weaving, I didn't do it like that and the posts would get pretty uh, bent out of place. As you can see on some of the beds over here, I'll show you. Um, so if you do it this way, your posts will stay much more straight, much more even, and you'll get a better weaving. And then once you have that, you just want to kind of start putting the branches in. Let's see, that one's kind of wonky. Let me start with a different one. Oh, and I want to show you, that's obviously too thick to weave, so I would cut it probably about here, and the rest of it's pretty weavable. So. Here's another good one. See now once I have the other branches down there kind of holding it in place, it doesn't move as much when I put other branches on.
And by and by, you just work it up. So it starts to look nice pretty quick. It's kind of fun, really. Um, move down and do a little bit down here. And you obviously, it's like weaving a basket. So I look and I see that this strand is on this side of it. So I'm going to start on this side because you want to kind of move back and forth between the posts and around the bed to make it as even as possible. Okay, so some of these, you can see like this one, this is really thick. This is a part that I really, I really can't weave that. And so I'll just cut that off before I even start. Do it right there. There we go. I'm going to start this one backwards, let the narrow end go that way, just to try to keep things even. Let's see. Start on that side. And because I'm starting in a new spot with a thick end of a branch, I need to get one that will complement it. We'll do this one. That way the branches, because see if I didn't and I push this all the way down, these would bend out of place. So I'm going to go with this right here. There we go. <laughs> this one's a little bit brittle. It might snap. But let me just see if I can work it well enough that it doesn't. And these beds, these raised beds, <laughs> very good, should last quite a long time. The posts have been treated. They were used in the orchards around where we live um, twice, and then they're rejected. So these are rejected posts, um, but they still have a lot of life in them yet, you know, um, being treated, they'll, they'll last a long time. And these branches with the bark still on and everything, it'll take quite a while for them to rot down. Okay, so that's quite firm. I can't push it down very well, which means it's holding pretty snug. I'll just work along here. There we go. Look at how nice and straight those are still standing. So sometimes, like I'll just leave that on and I'll weave it in and just work it in carefully. There we go. This one's a little bit brittle. Nope, that one snapped. I need to pull out the tomatillos. Oh, snapped again. It, sometimes they snap like this, and um, but as long as part of it's holding, it's still fine. It just doesn't give quite as much tension to the uh, to the wattle bed, but that's okay because other branches will hold it in tight. Now, obviously, I don't want this long branch sticking out here, so I'll come along. That's kind of cutting through two at once. I'll just come along here and I'll clean up all the big posts or the big branches and all the little stuff that might need to be trimmed off. You know, if something's sticking out like this, you don't want people to get hurt on that. It could be sharp. So I'll just trim that off. And then there's a bit of a branch here that's not quite long enough to be woven into uh, that post. So then I'll cut that off. And you just kind of go along and you tidy it up a little bit. Trim that off, because you don't want people getting hurt. There we go. So that's wattle weaving. This bed still has a ways to go, but you can see some of our other finished products here. All right, so these are some finished ones. These have been filled with dirt and then the mulch put back on top. And then we'll just come along and cut these posts. Uh, this one's done. As you can see, this is actually the very first bed that I did. So you can see it's a little wonky. The posts are kind of back and forth. They're not straight up and down, but that's because um, I didn't do the technique that I just showed you of keeping the branch, helping the branches keep the posts right in place, very nice and straight. So these are a little bit uh, moved out of place, and that's all right. I still like it. Um, but if you want your post straight, 
you can do it the way I showed you. Um, anyway, oh, the other thing, these will these these branches as they kind of cure and dry, they do shrink up just a little bit, and so. You'll want to put your branches in, let them sit for about a week to two weeks, and then they'll dry a little bit, they'll shrink a little bit, and then you can push on them and they'll move down. For example, this fence here that I'm building, it's not quite done, but I wanted to let the branches sit for a little bit, and you can see that it looks like there's lots of gaps there. That wasn't that way when I first built it. Um, it's because they've shrunk up and dried a little bit. So then, <laughs> this is really awesome, um, you just climb up and gently push down. Oh. You can see they are moving down a little bit. Get a couple more inches. See. If... Oh. Then you just kind of work along and push the branches down, and then you've got that extra space where you can put more branches, and the weave is tighter. So looks like I need to work that down a little more. Uh, and then after you've got the branches tighter together, then you can fill it with dirt, which is what we've been doing, building raised beds here. Now this whole garden, pretty much this whole space, except for where those raspberries are over there, this is all new. This used to be grass. So what we did is we put cardboard down to suffocate the grass um, and then just laid topsoil on top of it. Uh, thankfully we had access to that so it didn't cost as much. Um, cost us any really except for time and labor um, but it made the ground kind of hard so which is why we're building the raised beds right now it'll help our plants to grow better um, so this is all this used to be grass so if people tell you you can't put a garden over grass you can it just might require a little bit uh, of doing we just put cardboard down and then the the topsoil on top suffocated the grass and we haven't had any grass coming up um, and also the mulch helps tons because it keeps the weeds down and then you don't have to weed as much. I love weeding like 10 minutes a week. It's great. Uh, so use mulch. I can't think of anything else. So yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of fun. It's very organic looking. It's, it's, uh, I think it looks nice. And a lot of people have commented on how nice it looks. Uh, and we really like it. And um, the best thing about it is, is it really hasn't cost us any money except for a little, for a little, a uh, fair amount of time. But our neighbors put in uh, beds, raised beds with um, redwood and it was like the size of maybe two of these total. And it cost them like $800. And we thought, uh, we're, we want a big garden, we don't want to spend a fortune, so what other ways can we do it? And I don't like the idea of uh, straw bale gardening for my own personal various reasons. Um, and we decided to try this, and it's just worked out so beautifully. And people commented on how lovely it is, and I love it. So I can't wait to finish it. I'll have to show you the finished product when it's all done. But uh, anyway, that's waddle weaving. Pretty much like weaving a basket, but just good to know a few things. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. And please subscribe and give us a like. Thanks, guys. So, best thing ever, hire the neighbor kid to help dump the soil in here to move the dirt. We've got a, a neighbor kid who's keen to earn a little pocket money, so it helps us out. Helps him out, helps us out. It's all good, right?